Today we have a 2003 Nissan Frontier with a hundred thousand mile. Actually it's over a hundred thousand miles. Today I'm going to show you how to replace the manifold oxygen sensor. The primary oxygen sensor is located in the manifold. This is the passenger side of the engine. This is our oxygen sensor. This is our plug for the primary, which is the one we're going to be removing. And this is our plug for the secondary O2 sensor, oxygen sensor. The secondary oxygen sensor monitors the performance of the catalytic converter. Normally when the sensor or the catalytic converter goes bad, you will get a check engine light. That goes for both sensor. Since we have a hundred thousand mile, we do not have a check engine light pertaining to the oxygen sensor. But it is common practice to replace the oxygen sensor between sixty to seventy thousand mile. This is our primary. This is our secondary. Secondary is with the red cable. Our primary is the blue cable. From the color of the cable, it signified that the oxygen sensor on this vehicle was never replaced, or if it was, it was probably replaced with the factory Nissan oxygen sensor. So today we're going to remove the blue cable oxygen sensor. In order to remove these sensors, we're going to need a special socket, which I'm going to show you in a minute. But this blue cable has a tie down right here, which we'll need removing. Also, in the back, these two little pins right here are going to need to get removed for the blue cable. Our secondary O2 sensor is located down here. It's in a very tight spot. You're also going to need to remove this clip right here that holds the wire in position. When we are ready to replace this primary O2 sensor, we're going to have to remove the EVAP solenoid. This is 210 millimeter, and we're going to replace the plug, we're going to remove the plug. What we're going to do is we're not really going to disconnect the hoses. We're just going to take off these two 10 millimeter, and we're going to lay this whole actuator back so we could get room to get in there. You could see the sensor. Now, this is our socket to remove the oxygen sensor. It's require a half inch drive ratchet. That's this right here. We're going to use an extension, this is a half inch extension, to make our removal a bit easier. When you remove this plug, you're going to just press this in from under, because the plug's going to be like that. So you're going to press this in and you're going to slide it out. Just lean the clips back and you pull it up.
this is our factory oxygen sensor. Now, what has happened here, instead of the oxygen sensor being removed, it came out from the plug. So this sensor is going to have to get on screw from this plug, and then the plug is going to have to get fit back into the manifold, and then we're going to be able to screw the oxygen sensor, the new oxygen sensor back in place. So what happened here, as you can see, you see the difference? So this is actually a reducer. The reducer has to get removed from this old oxygen sensor and placed back into the manifold and then we can install this one. The vehicle sensor, oxygen sensor, is being replaced with these aftermarket sensor that has the same plug connection but when you look at the body of the oxygen sensor it's much different than the factory Nissan factory OEM Bosch oxygen sensor. Using these aftermarket oxygen sensor will cause the ECU to display a NOx sensor code P0328 and this will make the vehicle fail state emission preventing it from driving. You should always use the factory Nissan Bosch oxygen sensor from the dealer and not these thin long body high impedance oxygen sensor. This vehicle is require a low impedance Bosch oxygen sensor from the Nissan dealer. Now that we have removed our reducer, I've placed some anti-seeds on the thread. So next time when we remove it or any future maintenance, it will be easy to remove the O2 sensor. To make this easy, we're not going to install this first. What we're going to do is we're going to place the oxygen sensor into the reducer, fit it to the reducer, and then we're going to place our whole unit, one piece, into the manifold. Be careful and try not to cross thread it. Now we're going to take our special oxygen sensor socket and we're going to place it onto the sensor. By tightening the sensor, we're going to tighten our reducer in the manifold and the sensor at the same time. It is recommended that you turn the sensor three-quarter to a full turn once you snug it by hand. Or you can use a torque wrench and torque it to 25 foot-pounds of torque. Now, when you take a look at the plug, on this end is supposed to have a wetter packing. Make sure the wetter packing is replaced. It's a uh, rubber seal, so water does not get into our connectors.
This is our sensor. Once again, we have removed the reducer with the sensor. So we're going to proceed and do the same thing we did on the passenger side manifold. And that is using an inch and a quarter wrench and a 7-8 wrench to detach the oxygen sensor from the reducer. Okay, so now I've removed our reducer from the old oxygen sensor. My method of removing the oxygen sensor from the reducer is not the best way. I will recommend that you place the reducer in a vise and then use a 7-8 wrench to remove your oxygen sensor. Also, I have placed anti-seize on the reducer and the oxygen sensor. We're going to put the two together and install it as one unit. Now, when you get your new oxygen sensor, you're going to also get these tie down. That's the plastic piece that I have chopped out with the chisel. So you're going to reuse these once you install your new oxygen sensor. And today we have a successful installation. Once you have removed and replaced your primary oxygen sensor, during startup, when the engine is cold, you want to look for water droplets coming out of the tailpipe. This ensures a perfect emission system. What it means is any excess gasoline that's caught up in the exhaust system will be turned into water, which means the hydrocarbon. The carbon will burn off and the hydrogen will mix with oxygen and you will get H2O. So during early morning startup, before the engine gets hot, this is what you want to see. You want to see water dropping from the tailpipe. This ensures perfect emissions. If this does not occur, chances are the catalytic converter could be defective or need replacing. So today, we have completed a successful installation, and by doing so, we have also improved the emissions on this vehicle. We have also improved the gas mileage, and this you will tell when you start driving the vehicle and monitoring the odometer. Thank you.